Good morning, slaves. When I'm in Rochester and I want to see burning cop cars, I watch Rochester in the Media, home of the motherfucking resistance. We're standing here in front of the federal uh, building because we feel that with the Rochester Police Department we need to ask for a federal consent decree which would make which would have an investigation from, from the uh, Justice Department into the civil rights violations of the citizens of Rochester. This is an ongoing occurrence in the city of Rochester and there is absolutely no accountability. Two, we chose this date because two years ago on the bridge crossing Main Street and the river there was a police riot that caused two peaceful protesters to go to the hospital and have to get stitches and 12 were arrested. What did I just tell you? I'm moving! Keep... Look at the toilet, beat him up! His face is all pounding. Let him go! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my god. What's going on? What are you doing? What are you talking about? I'm not We asked then, by going to city council meetings, talking to Mayor Duffy at that time, and a variety of other city officials to investigate, and two years later we still have absolutely no accountability. And there has been absolutely nothing forthcoming about that incident. The incidents continue to go unchallenged, and the police continued to go unchallenged. Whenever power is unchecked, power is corrupting. And we are really feel that this needs to be changed and we don't think that it really, we have questions whether it will really come from the city of Rochester or it has to come from an outside source, like the federal consent decree and the Justice Department demanding that changes happen after an investigation. Thank you. So basically a federal consent decree is when the Department of Justice comes in, investigates the police department from bottom to top, and they make a series of recommendations to, for, the, for the police department to change their trainings or their practices to align with the civil rights of people in the Constitution. And the, the benefit of a consent decree is that not only are these recommendations made, but it's, it's it's actually from a federal court order that they have mandated to make these and they're usually given five years or ten years and if they don't do it they're held in contempt of court so it's reform that can be comprehensive of a police department who has a practice of racial profiling has a practice of um, abusing people's civil rights of police brutality abusing their authority abu abusing of children abusing their authority abusing their authority and this can be and the benefit is that is actually um, is done by lawyers in the Department of Justice, and then it's enforced by um, 
then it's enforced by a court order. And, and it's not done, some people worry, they say they don't trust the government. It's not done by the FBI, it's not done by agents. It's done by lawyers that are um, sensitive to people's civil rights that write the recommendations. And then this, this gives us a basis as a community to hold them accountable. Right. Be, be, you know, because, because once we have these in place, we have to, it's, uh, it's going to come down to the community to enforce them. But it gives us a basis of an external authority to come in to do it, because the police are not policing themselves. But, it, but whatever, whatever we do, the community has to be involved, the community has to be active, people have to speak up for themselves, we have to organize to protect ourselves. Well, I, I agree that there, there needs to be an uh, investigation into the, to, um, the practices of the, the, the authority in the city because a lot of the practices are unjust. There's a lot of injustices going on in the city by the officials. Um, and in order to change that, um, we need the federal government to uh, appoint somebody to come here to investigate our claims. You know, injustices. I mean, this is a book, democracy, and I and I believe it's it's in order for it to stay a democracy, we we should be all treated fair. I mean, under the Constitution of the United States, it, it is not right for anybody to be um, subjected to racial profiling or other unjust uh, laws uh, in this society by anyone. I personally had a situation with the police here in Rochester where I was beaten up, put in the hospital, never charged, never arrested, and then the people have the court right here, the people who beat me up, it's the same people, it's, 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 it's in charge of the investigation. Now you tell me if that's not an injustice to me to have, to have my situation looked at and, and investigated thoroughly and properly, Yes, it is an injustice, and I would like to see the federal government uh, act uh, on, on, on our claims that there, there's, there needs to be an investigation of the police here in Rochester. Not just Rochester police, the state police and the FBI, too. Hi, I'm Lydia, and I live in Rochester, New York. June 23rd, the police came and raided my home. They tore up my kids' things, they sliced up my kids' bed. I haven't had no justice, no nothing. I'm still trying to piece together what we got left, what they did damage, and what we do have left. And my daughter's terrified. She won't go outside. My son won't go outside. My one-year-old son, he cries at night. My, my kids have nightmares of this. And I just wanted to know, is there ever going to be any justice? Can they look more into the situation? I'm not a bad person. I just turned 30. I have four children that lives in the home with me. And while my kids were watching this, my 10-year-old daughter had a shotgun pump put to her face. She was later on set next door, and she had an asthma attack. The police not once have called the ambulance to have my daughter checked out to see if she was fine. I want to know, is there some justice, and can justice be served for us? I think it's important that we have a Department of Justice investigation not just because we have civil rights abuses, but in Rochester there's a pattern and a practice. And when people are abused, there's no accountability. The internal process is not working. As Russell said, the person who was in charge of, of roughing him up and abusing him is the same person who investigated his own claim. As Lydia was talking about where um, where her family, her small kids were traumatized as they as they ransacked the whole place and they said, erect it and they said, well, pay for it yourself. The police chief said, this is exactly how we do these things. And this is, and this, this is proper procedure. That's what he thinks is proper procedure. The police said they do this to kids 250 times a year, right? So that's, that's 700, if, if you have two or three kids, that's five to 700 kids a year that are traumatized by the police. And we were sitting down trying to eat our bowl of cereal and we were watching TV. And the cops came in and then just kicked the door open and they told everybody to get on the ground. But me and me and my two brothers and my sister and me didn't get on the ground. We jumped, actually jumped on the couch. And then I went to grab to the door to take it in the to take it in the room and shut the door. 
because they thought the dog was going to bite them. And then the guy, he came up to me and put the shotgun in my face and I backed up in my mom room and I was shaking my head saying, no, I don't want to come out my mom room because I didn't want to see nobody. And then my- This is a pattern and the police are doing nothing about it. As Susan said here, people were, people were abused, protesters were abused, that's still going on and there's no accountability. Uh, we had an extremely high profile case where Emily Good was arrested for videotaping the police This is my front yard. I'm just recording what you're doing. It's my right. Actually, not from the sidewalk. This is my yard. Um, and, and even then, they didn't do any internal investigation, they didn't interview any of the witnesses, even though this case was as big as any case in years, right? So in Rochester, even if people are found guilty of civil rights abuses by a federal jury, they're promoted and they continue to function on this police force. Police that shoot people, police that shoot unarmed people, typically stay on the force and promote it. The federal consent decree is happening all over the country and it should be happening here. It's happened from police departments as small as 50 people in Steubenville, Ohio, to, um, to Pittsburgh and Los Angeles, police departments of, um, of, of 20, 30,000 police. So this, we are calling on the Department of Investigation to come in, do a comprehensive investigation, and the only way that this, that this police, this corrupt police department could be reformed is from a court order from a federal judge. And we're calling on Tom Richards to walk across the street, 300 feet, go before a federal judge, and sign a, sign a decree, and actually move to comprehensive reform that's going to change this police department. And um, so it actually brings it closer to serving people's civil rights. I just, I just have one question for the police department. Why is the police department doing favor for real estate agents? doing citizen arrest and everything grandmothers sending 50 cops. These internal investigations are done by the police and there's really no recourse for citizens. They say they have what's quote called a civilian review board currently, but basically the police investigate themselves, hand over the findings and then is handed back to the police chief to decide, you know, what based on their findings, what it is that was done and if it's valid. So really, it's the police department investigating themselves. In the 90s, there was the goon squad that was torturing and attacking people. One of the people indicted is now the head of the police union. This is a police force that basically rewards you for civil rights violations and for brutality amongst its citizens. And most of these police force do not even live in the city. They are not city residents. They come from the suburbs and rural. So are, don't have a vested interest in the city. And I think that's a real problem too. And as I said, you know, if we felt that there was real action happening through the city, you know, but we would, you know, and we will continue to put pressure on them. But we feel that, you know, two years we've been waiting on this police riot, which was, an incredible 
Um, I, as a, a journalist for Rochester New Media, told one of the police officers, I'm a journalist, and he basically said, I don't fucking give a I don't fucking care, excuse me, that was his words. Meanwhile, pushing me into a planter. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that the Bill of Rights says freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, and that is all being curtailed by this Rochester Police Department. And we hope that there will be some action on this. I know that there is another citizen, Teddy Loria, who is also pushing for a federal consent decree. He has sued the department, uh, police department four times for his, abuse, for his own abuse and has won those cases and has another lawsuit pending and another one he is going to be filing. So this is a recurrent thing. It's not only a, the initial our, uh, problems with them, but then the retaliation that they do. And something needs to be done about this. And as I said, power unchecked is power gone awry. And that's what's happened with this police force in Rochester. Thank you. You have the right.